Okay, first off, this is the most important piece of equipment in the room because in order for the kids to see me drawing things, they have to be able to see it up on this big screen, uh, which uh, is projected by this uh, overhead projector. Um, unfortunately, I've been trying to get them to change the bulb out on this now for about four years, and it just keeps getting dimmer and dimmer. So in order to actually see the screen, I usually have to turn uh, the overhead lights out. Um, quite often I'll come in here and uh, pull the uh, tubes out of the, light, uh, the lights just in front of the screen because the room has to be light enough for the kids to see what they're doing but it has to be dark enough for you to project uh, that up onto the screen. It's kind of a pain. Uh, so the cartooning part then, um, I use my uh, old uh, eight millimeter camera mounted on a, um, a, a rod that I built um, and also used just a standard um, lamp to uh, illuminate the uh, drawing. This, um, this tripod thing is just a standard artist uh, portable tripod. It all folds up into just one little tiny box. So it's a convenient way to hold everything together and keep all of my drawing materials and so on. You could use just about anything to hold this up uh, so that uh, the camera would be able to project down onto the uh, drawing. But I found this works pretty well. I also have to bring in uh, my own um, high chair so that I sit properly at this because obviously I have to do the drawing so it has to be reasonably comfortable. Now what I do is I take the output from the camera and I bring it out on an extended cable and I bring it over here to the input. I take off the one that's normally attached here, going into here. This comes from the DVR that's uh, in the classroom. That's what's normally hooked there. But what I do is I put my camera, I plug my camera into that. Because when you get ready to uh, switch from the computer that's built in under here, when you get ready to switch over, you have to use this control function right here, right? And that's this select. So when you push the select, the projector up here looks around for its various inputs because it has multiple inputs. It's got one from the computer, the underside of the desk here, that computer down there, and it's also got an input for a video feed, which normally comes from the uh, DVR or VHS player that's under here. So I've substituted now my own camera input so when I hit the select button right here it will uh, look for a signal and you just push this until it finds the right one which in the case of the camera would be uh, this little cartoon right here. So that lets you use a video camera uh, to uh, project through the projector onto the screen. All right now the other piece of this which tends to be very confusing for a lot of people when they first see it is I actually use my laptop uh, to do my projections. Right now it's got the Kidtricity stuff up on it. Uh, but I have uh, the uh, introduction and um, a number of different exercises built in PowerPoint which I project also up on the screen. But once again, you have to decide what, which input do you want to, to be projected. So effectively, I have three different inputs here. I can use my laptop projected up on the screen. I can use the uh, computer that's built in under the desk to project up on the screen. Or I can use my camera to project up on the screen. Now the complication that comes into uh, the whole mess is when I'm using my laptop, I have to actually operate this switch right here. There's a select switch for the computer inputs. So not only do I have a select for the inputs to the projector, but I have also a secondary uh, selection so that I can use my um, laptop when I have this button pushed in one direction or I can use the computer under here when the button is pushed in the other direction. Now if you're not familiar with how you get a, a signal out of a laptop, um, perhaps you don't have a laptop, but uh, 
it's a standard thing where you have to hit the um, function key, this one right here. You have to hit the function key and the F8. And what that does is it tells this laptop computer that it needs to uh, not only project onto its own screen, but send a signal out uh, on this cable right here that's always just laying on the desk. So this goes over to that switch. So when you set your, com your laptop up so that it projects both to its own screen and to an external screen, this is where the signal goes. So it goes over to that switch and then you'll have to push the switch over here so that that signal will also appear on this screen. And depending on how you have this selected, it will go up to the projector. Does it sound a little confusing? Well, initially I suppose it can be, but after you've done this a number of times, it gets simpler and simpler. Now one more thing. Um, I use an external controller uh, for my laptop so that I can uh, flip through the uh, PowerPoint uh, slides. And to do that, I have a small device here that hooks up to the uh, USB port, any USB port, and it has this little wireless uh, transmitter receiver that will talk to this, right? this right here. It also has an off on switch. Um, so I can select here by this little switch right here whether I want to control this computer uh, so I can jump through the slides or if I just want to use it as a mouse, a remote mouse. So this is a really cool little thing here because it allows you to wander around the room interacting with the students at the same time you can control what's going on up here on the screen. So, I know it sounds like a handful, and if you're just coming into this for the first time, trying to use these various uh, audio-visual devices, it can appear, appear to be a little uh, confusing, but uh, a little bit of practice, or uh, send me an email. I'll be glad to help you try to figure this out. And then finally, the other thing you'll notice here on the, um, the Rooms computer, I've got a little cartoon going here. This is Dudley Do-Right. Um, I often use a number of videos. Here's one I just got recently, Dudley Do-Right. And, and instead of uh, um, using the camera over here to uh, draw this, because I can't have the camera projecting on the screen at the same time that I have the computer projecting on the screen. So what I often do is I'll run one of these cartoons and I'll just put it on pause on one of the little cartoons I really like um, and that, let that project up on the screen and then I'll come over here on the board just freehand and I'll draw that up on the board using the dry erase markers uh, so the kids can see how I do it. So I'll have the projection of Dudley Do-Right up on the screen and I'll just draw it freehand up here really, really big. So the kids can do exactly what I do when I have the um, uh, projector, that is the camera going, they'll see how I use the circles and the squares and the usual kind of step-by-step -step drawing. All right, so all of this is uh, kind of freelance in the sense that I have to choose which one of these drawings we're going to do. Um, I put up a large one like these, and I come, in, I come in ahead of time and I set up which ones of these drawings I'm going to do depending on how fast the class is working, how many kids I have, how old they are, what their competency level is. Um, so I put up these large drawings back here as examples and I leave those up all the time. And then I have a huge stack back here, you can see them back there. I have a huge stack of drawings the same size as these up here that I go through each day and select which ones I want to use uh, to draw uh, with uh, the camera over my shoulder. So once again, I have a format, but I don't have a hard, strict uh, set 
uh, of guidelines on which drawings I do each day because I have to get the kids through uh, the whole uh, kind of building process. Uh, this is the second day uh, today and we actually only did one drawing yesterday, this mouse, the introductory mouse. I always do this one first uh, to show them how we put the parts together, you know, the step by step. But after that, it's pretty much each day I have to select which ones I'm going to use. Uh, today will just be a whole series of uh, pretty easy drawings, but I have to get them through how to do uh, uh, wording, um, how to do inking, how to do coloring, all those steps in order to get to the final piece, which is the uh, large four panel um, color Sunday comic strip uh, on this size paper right here. So once again, you have some upfront work that you're going to have to do uh, in order to have all the materials ready. It uh, takes quite a bit of time to do this, uh, to set everything up and make sure everything is working. Uh, you can't come into the classroom 15 minutes ahead of time and expect to have this all set up. I typically use 45 minutes, half an hour, 45 minutes, to make sure everything is working. The projectors are working, the switches all work, um, all that kind of stuff. It's a slightly different, uh, slightly different mindset uh, coming from a commercial environment like mine, uh, where you have to, you're completely responsible for everything. I mean everything. The only thing that the um, organization provides is a classroom with seats in it and an overhead projector. <laughs> Uh, you're responsible for everything else, including all of your materials, uh, all of the PowerPoints, your computer, if you're going to use a laptop computer like I do. Uh, literally, you own the entire thing, and that's part of the reason why I'm showing you all of these details is because if you do use my material under my copyright, you need to be able to follow these uh, instructions. So. If it looks a little too complicated, it's, uh, it may be not something you want to do. You may want to make up your own course, make up your own drawings. Um, so give that some consideration when you, um, well, when you consider doing uh, no SLLC material, in this case, uh, cartooning for kids. But the same thing goes for my other stuff, um, Kids Tricity 1 and Kids Tricity 2. So if you have any questions, you can uh, email me at um, info, I-N-F-O, at noesllc, that's N-O-E-S-S-L-L-C dot com. So thanks very much for listening. Good luck.